All right, we are running live. We're running live now. We had some technical glitches with the audio event, but we're gonna we're gonna stream live for a little while and see who joins us. Tanya, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I'm glad I got the link. <laughs> So I'm streaming live over on LinkedIn for any of you guys who were on the audio event and got lost. We're trying to corral the group. We've got Jackie and Tanya here. So what we can do, and if you're just jumping on live now, we're talking about LinkedIn top voice, and we're talking about some of our clients who've been able to land top voice, how they were able to land top voice and what it's doing for them. So Tanya, I would love to go to you as an interior designer, um, leveraging the LinkedIn platform. What was your journey like becoming LinkedIn top voice in the interior design space? Yeah. So as you know, I started at literally zero. So I, I want people to know that because I really didn't have any connections coming into this. And I achieved the top voice status before we before I hit 500 connections. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, you know, I really was consistent. I did everything that Jackie was saying. I set up the um, the top skills, you know, all of that. Um, and I was consistently posting, but also consistently commenting on those articles. But mm -hmm. when the article didn't come up in my feed to say, hey, do you want to contribute to this? I went looking for the articles. So mm -hmm. I continued to do that. And, you know, as everyone was saying earlier, the, the you know, I, I've been doing this for 25 years. I, I have a voice. So <laughs> the article would come up and it was, you know, sometimes some kind of AI jumble of things. And I just thought, you know what, I'm not even going to read what its little suggested blurb is as a response. I'm going to read the question and I'm going to respond to the question with my own thoughts. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. And sometimes I didn't agree when, if I did read a, read a little bit of the blurb, I didn't agree with what it said. And so I would offer a different opinion and mm -hmm. why. And we had talked about that earlier about, you know, positive dissent, but really just sharing my actual, you know, thoughts. Yes. So not being afraid to have an opinion. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, And, you know, and sharing anything that I thought was valuable, you know, if it touched on something, you know, peripherally, I wanted to share that. And, you know, of course, you know, I do more than just interior design for homes. I do vacation rentals and things too. So I, I, I kind of have this, you know, different, uh, all encompassing kind of perspective of it. And I wanted to share, you know, this is what actually works. This is what um, maybe we don't want to focus on. And, you know, a lot of times things were about colors or color theory. And, you know, I get it. It's all like textbook. But sometimes that's not what fits you and it's not what fits your brand. And so have that voice and share that. So that's that's what I did. So good. Yeah. So thank you for sharing. I think that kind of one of the underlying like undercurrents of all of you guys is like having a voice, having an opinion. Right. And that's how part of how we get top voice. Um, and I'm sorry, um, Steve, if you spoke and I didn't hear it, but I'd love to hear. Did did you speak, Stephen, on like your strategy? Yeah. I don't know. The audio event just didn't want to keep me in. So <laughs> so let's go to uh, those of you who are jumping on now and hearing us streaming live for the first time. You may not have even opted into the audio event and you're watching this now. We're talking about LinkedIn's top voice. And we've got a couple of clients here inside of our academy who've learned, they've earned LinkedIn's top voice. We've got about 14 or 15 of you guys who've hit it since the beginning of the year. Would love to go to you, Kathy. Um, I know that you're in the travel arena um, and you got LinkedIn's top voice for top travel management voice. Um, and I'm sure there may be some people listening who'd be really curious to hear how you were able to land top voice in the travel space. Yeah, thank you. Um, it actually was uh, a, a lot easier than I anticipated. So I, I old school LinkedIn and I have a, a number of connections from my project management days and 20 years of project management history. And I have two sides to my business. And so as Jackie alluded to, it really was deciding which side of my business I wanted to focus on for that top voice and contributing to articles. And really I'm focusing on building that travel side of the business. And so I focus there. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the collaborative articles related to travel are for the actual uh, travel industry themselves. So those hotels and service managers in that 
And so the travel management really fit more into helping with travel planning and really being that concierge that I am for my clients. And mm. so I really focused on, as, as Tanya did, um, writing components to those articles that really focused on how I work to service my clients and really make a difference in the trips that they're taking, uh, whether that be small little pieces, letting the hotel know ahead of time and the general manager know ahead of time that my client is coming and my client is a VIP in my book and having those relationships with those suppliers so that I could do that um, and things to that effect. And really, unfortunately, things do go wrong as we saw today the audio event didn't quite go as planned, um, but how do you step in and how do you manage those things for your clients when things don't go right? And how do you work with them to correct those situations? And so really it's giving guidance in that arena and um, just consistency. Once or twice a week, I would go into some of those articles and post. And um, I would say probably a month, month and a half later, um, I was awarded with the top voice. And now so I love this. Yeah. What I love what you're sharing, um, Kathy, you know, is that like within a month and a half of strategic action, you were able to win top voice. And I love that, you know, Tanya was saying she was new to the playing field on LinkedIn and she was able to, to earn top voice. And so I hope those of you guys watching this or watching the replay are really encouraged that, you know, I just want to say that I see a lot of entrepreneurs banging their head against a wall, like a gerbil or a hamster on a wheel on Instagram and Facebook with serious businesses, trying to play the game, trying to win the algorithms and trying, you know, to win against these beasts who are huge influencers, right. That have learned and cracked the code when it comes to trending reels and all the things, when you can simply be an influencer and a thought leader in speak your knowledge and collaborate with your knowledge in an authentic way on LinkedIn and gain influence quickly, like quickly, right? Um, through a values-based way that makes sense to your followers and engagers on the platform versus using a trending audio that has nothing to do with the content that you put out, right? Um, I would love with this group, does anyone want to share like, um, how you, how getting that label top voice has changed your interaction on LinkedIn or your conversations, your communication, lead generation? Like, does anybody want to speak to, I know some of you are new to this, but speak to your experience with getting that title and what it's done for you. I see Sue nodding her head. Do you want to speak to it, Sue? Sure. Be glad to. Um, one thing I definitely believe I'm getting more engagement and, uh, I don't know if that's just because of the algorithm or what, but my posts are getting many more impressions and I've slowly begun to see actual interaction on the post, not just in the DMs, mm -hmm. but actually on the post, which has been really exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the opposite end of it is. Every uh, marketer and uh, lead gen person out there wants to work with me now. Yeah. So, uh, which is exciting, I guess. That's a good indicator. But, um, you know, you got to be careful how many of those you accept into your into your network. But that that's been kind of, of uh, interesting, too, as well. But and interesting. I don't know, but I feel like my existing clients and my former clients mm -hmm. have maybe re-engaged again after that. Mm -hmm. I've got two clients that have come back and want to work with me again. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not, but mm -hmm. I think the more I land in their feed, yes. the more they think of me. So yes, that's branding 101, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that. I love that. Now, Justine, I don't know. I, I disappeared for a couple of minutes, so I'm not sure if you've had a chance to speak yet. No? Okay. So Justine is in the interior design space as well. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to speak a little bit to your strategies and how you were able to um, land top voice in the interior design space? Sure. Sure. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, so I actually didn't know what I was doing when I first started contributing when these little things popped up. Um, I knew about Top Voice. I was um, wondering sort of how, how to get that accolade. 
um, but was really just dabbling in, you know, getting my content up, etc. cetera. Um, initially, I didn't even realize I was contributing to some architecture um, uh, collaborative articles as well as interior design. And that was only when I sort of understood more about how they were being pushed to me, which was actually through my skills. Mm. So then I went back to my skills because I had interior architecture as one of my skills, which is, but I don't, didn't want them to be pushing those towards me. So I tweaked those a little bit and really channeled it myself to go and just answer interior design questions because I wanted to just get that badge. So I think after I did that, it started to pick up a little, little bit more. And then you get these little um, notifications saying, you know, thanks for contributing. You're now in the top 31%. And I felt like I was in the top 31% for a couple of weeks. Um, I think it took a total of doing your academy class and it was about five weeks or six weeks um, when I got the badge. Um, awesome. Yeah. So a lot of you guys got yeah. it in less than two months of being in the program. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And some Just of you with like no experience with LinkedIn, some of you um, vast experience with LinkedIn. So good. Okay. Um, what about um, Heather? So we've got, I'm kind of ping-ponging around. Originally I was trying to go in, in groups on audio, but then we kind of like scrambled and now I'm like herding cats, getting you guys all back together. So um, with Heather, you're in the travel space as well. What, um, maybe share with us, like how long have you been on LinkedIn? And then when you started to, when you got the idea of going for Top Voice, if you did, unless maybe you serendipitously it landed in your lap, I'm not sure. Um, how long have, How long have you been on LinkedIn before initiating a strategy around top voice and then how long did it take you to get top voice when you went after it top voice and then um, i'm hearing a lot of feedback are you guys able to hear me okay i'm hearing a lot of feedback okay so i was on i've been on linkedin for okay. years honestly so, <laughs> i think at least 15 or 20 years, but I thought before I met you that this was really a, like a set it and forget it kind of tool. I had my photo up there. I had my resume. I never looked at it. So I went for Top Voice. I, I think Top Voice came into my realm sometime last year. And at first I tried commenting on the, you know, I had to find a, a, a topic that was most resonating with what I did. And then I was commenting on these articles. Hey, Heather, really I quick. What might help you is I know it's probably hard to think with the noise in the background, turn your volume down a little bit on your speaker. We can still hear you, but maybe you won't hear the reverberation as much. Is that speaker. better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so I, I was commenting on these articles and frankly getting really frustrated because I was in the top, you know, 30%, the top, 20, you know, and it just never seemed to work. And I was just so annoyed. And then finally, one day somebody said, oh, congratulations, you made top voice. And I said, oh, I did. <laughs> and I think that was maybe December, or January. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things that helped was going through the entire list of available collaborative articles and finding ones that no one had commented on, or like one person had commented on. Mm -hmm. and adding my voice to those. And the other thing I found is that uh, it, 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 I guess it's something you have to keep, maintain. It's not like you get it. And it's not the set it and forget it. <laughs> you yeah. have to keep doing it. So every week or so, I make some time to go through the articles again and find ones that I haven't commented on or something maybe that I, if, if there isn't one that I can answer go back and look at other ones and maybe I can add more value than I did before. So uh, I continue my, uh, my strategies right now. That's awesome. Um, so quick question for you, Jackie, because, um, if you're not inside the Academy, if you may not know this, but Jackie's really the brains behind all the things that are constantly changing with LinkedIn, not me. I'm just like the face of the company, but so, um, I'm going to like display my ignorance here. Um, but, does getting top voice, does that have anything to do with algorithms when it comes to off platform on Google? Because I remember Denise talking about how once she got top voice, and I don't know that there was a direct correlation, but as a real estate agent, she was like top being discovered 
further up in the feed on, on in the Google feed. And I don't know if there's any interplay there. I think that there could be a correlation there. I mean, here's the, the thing is favorability. That's what we're looking at. And I mean, if you achieve something that they put out there, like they dangle a carrot in front of you and you achieve it, that's good. And so like your content is going to be favored. Things that you do is going to be favored, which is why I believe that Sue saw some uptick in all of the things that she's doing. And so, however, I'll, I will say in the same breath that if you're putting out content that people don't want to see, I don't think you you can reasonably expect a, a bump. But if you are, I know Sue is always putting out really great content. And so that would give it a type of a bump. But I also want to hit on the fact that what Heather said is that you don't get to keep this. You have to maintain it. So in most people, like it disappears. I think it's at six months and it disappears. So you have to consistently contribute and then they reevaluate and it either you it either goes or stays. So it's yeah. definitely something that, which I like because it's not like, you know, you do it one time and then you get the badge for life. Totally. And I personally love that about LinkedIn. I think right. most of us gravitated over here because we're tired of the fluff. We're tired of the spam. We're tired of the inauthentic stuff in our feeds and like, you know, chasing games and algorithms over on the other platforms. I personally love that LinkedIn puts barriers and rules around the game to reduce the spamming, reduce the, you know, like I love that they're putting out now that you can notify if it wasn't a, help, a helpful article, right? Because to me, you know, some just, people just go through there and just uh, blast it out. And like, that's not good for anybody. Yeah. So like, I, I love how they're always strategically looking for ways to, for lack of a better term, like curb the curb the the appetite for going viral because that's not really the purpose on this platform right um and so um it's i huge fan because it reduces the amount of time we have to spend on the platform in order to connect with the right people provide the right value and have authentic conversations right um such a good conversation well any of our students on the line any of you guys um any final words that you want to share around top voice that maybe we've got like we've Martha got... here. I think, I don't think Martha got a chance to say anything. Oh yes. Yes. Martha. So Martha, I'm trying to remember what you won top voice with. It was in leadership or executive coaching. Was that it right? Was both executive coaching and leadership coaching. Yes. And I, okay. um, and it's interesting, Melissa, cause I, I got it by chance. I actually started the Academy in, in uh, last past October. And then in November I got both. And I was like, what the heck is this? Because I remember uh, both you and Jackie saying, well, just go into LinkedIn and make sure that you comment and make sure that you're active. So I did that. And then one day I got the two, the two top voices. So I was very ple pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. And there was um, and there was an opportunity to, um, to, to use the learnings from the academy as well in terms of discipline and consistency. Mm. This is key if you if you want to um both obtain and keep your badge. I actually lost one of my badges on purpose because uh, I want because I wanted well, tell to us, tell us about that because we coach to this inside the academy. Yeah. One of you guys was just speaking to this. Like I think it was Justine. Like we teach you how to go back in and pull things away if you don't want to be known for certain things, right? Because there's certain things you don't want coming into your feed and recommended by LinkedIn. So speak to that if you don't mind. Well, it, it is about focus. Um, I wanted to focus my uh, my my stories, my you know my personal story on executive coaching, and I realized that I didn't have time to go to for both uh, to voices badges, so I had to choose, mm -hmm. and I and I chose very carefully, which means you know I had to invest the time and and research into the one I wanted to keep, and knowing that you know I had to let go. Um, the one I didn't have time um, or focus to to um, to work on. So um, it, it was a very conscious decision. I didn't feel bad. I, I felt a little bit bad when, when I lost it, but uh, it felt like the right thing to do. Um, and, and you always talk about focus, focus on what you really, really want. Uh, mm -hmm. It means that you have to let go some things in order to mm -hmm. focus on those that are more critical to you. That's right. And you can continue to expand your brand in that swim lane mm -hmm. for sure. So good. Um, any other 
comments from the group around top voice that maybe you felt like you, that's on your heart that you want to share. We've got, we, I don't know why last I checked, there was like 70 people watching you guys on LinkedIn right now. That's a pretty great recovery from, we've got 72 people watching us live right now from, from falling off of the LinkedIn audio. So Good so, come back I after that other, audio glitch. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I have some other um, things to add. I think we spent a lot of time talking about the articles, which are obviously hugely important. But, you know, the other things that you guys have really been coaching on is is how to do the content and to do that really well and consistently. And I don't think anybody here would have top voice without doing that also. Mm -hmm. And in the process of not just posting the content, but I... I don't know if this mattered to top voice, but I made a point of when I go in and comment on other people's posts, that if there's some connection or relationship to what I do, that my comment brings in my message. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of felt like I just kind of visualized it and envisioned it as the LinkedIn is basically watching everything I do Mm -hmm. (laughs) and is my voice consistent. So that's Mm -hmm. what I tried to go with. So good. Thank you so much for sharing that. And and I'm glad you brought that up. You know, content creation is really important. Um, And to your point, we've been talking a lot about collaborative articles, but, you know, inside of our academy, what these guys are alluding to is we, we, we really teach and train, you know, a methodology for creating what we call those content pillars that you're circling back to on a weekly basis that create that no love trust that's laser focused on your buyer persona or your particular avatar. So there definitely is like a method to the process, but I think that you guys are a phenomenal example of how taking the method and applying it within a month or two, you can crush getting this elite title and be you know, I love to call it, we, Jackie and I call it a think fluencer, right? You're not an influencer on the other platforms. You're a think fluencer by your subject matter expertise and collaboration on the platform. It's so awesome. Well, um, any, anybody else want to share any final oh, we thoughts? Have Julie here. Yeah. I have a, a comment that actually I think really kind of helped me and specifically of content. So my top voice is in real estate, which is obviously super wide you know, are you selling? Are you investing? Are you financing? And I obviously work in financing. So reading the articles too, sometimes helps me understand the perspective of others within the industry. And also helps not only like my perspective and growth, but also when it comes to content of, okay, well, what are people talking about? What is relevant that maybe is outside of my immediate little finance wheelhouse, but is certainly adjacent. So Mm -hmm. I've had some specifically because of that. Mm, I love that. So good. Um, I, I was going to add one one more thing about yeah. intentionality. Um, I get a lot of requests from LinkedIn to actually respond to questions. And when I go there, these are not necessarily areas that I want to respond. Mm. So don't get tempted by the fact that you are invited and you're on the top whatever you know, mm-hmm. to respond, just be intentional about what is the topic, what is the kind of content that you want to address. Mm-hmm. And there's another tip, which took me a while to get, you get the question and there are several, you know, steps to the question. And sometimes those questions are not what you want to talk about. There's always the last question that says what other things you want to consider. Mm-hmm. Go there, just add your content where it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um but again, be intentional about what are you speaking about, the voice that you're using, and where do you want to appear? So good. The, and it's so true, right? I think, you know, in, intentionality is wildly important on LinkedIn versus the other platforms. And you guys are like uh, a, a student of the process and you guys are experts in what we teach. It's like being laser focused, you know, everybody is not your body, right? Like um, we constantly say inside of the academy and it's known fact, you can make a million dollars a year with a thousand followers, right? If you have a thousand avid followers, you have enough people and with purchasing power to build your business. And so if we can get really strategic on LinkedIn and really niche within our audiences and protect that network and not just let in the masses, that creates more organic views and rises you to the top of the algorithm with your tight network who appreciate 
what you're putting out, right? That's what keeps you at the top of the feed and scene is because people are continuing to interact because they value what you're putting out because you're not just connecting with everyone. Because as you guys know, having thousands of people in your network that don't interact with your content doesn't help your algorithm and your visibility. A smaller network that's hyper-engaged keeps you more visible for longer. So, so good. You guys are awesome. You're like superstars. And, you know, huge thanks to Jackie for putting together the top voice training for you guys at the end of last year so that you guys could um, lean in and, and learn this. And I know Jackie continues to, um, you know, put new modules in as things change and evolve. I know that they're changing the way we do profiles right now. I don't know so Jackie. much, so much new stuff coming up. And I, this is also, I, I know what you're going to say this, but I, I do want to remind you guys that we have our lead gen masterclass coming up and mm -hmm. I'm going to go over all this again, but with visuals. So, mm -hmm. and a lot more. So yeah. if you definitely, if you want to like increase your lead gen on LinkedIn, you want to join that masterclass. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got about 80 people streaming live with us right now. If you've never attended our nine day, totally free masterclass, it's worth every minute for you to sit in on. It's totally free. We're constantly optimizing it with new things that are happening on the platform. We do it a couple of times a year just to bring value to our audience. These guys specifically cannonballed in from the nine day masterclass been on their six month journey with us inside the Academy. Um, but Jackie will drop the link, um, in this video where we're streaming live, um, where you guys can register, definitely check out the speakers today. Um, if you're wondering who all spoke, cause I know we're streaming live on zoom right now. What I noticed is if you go back to the live audio event and you registered for it, at least on my end, you can see everybody. Is it just the person who owns the account or can everybody see everybody, Jackie? I could see everybody, I guess. Okay. I, I think if you, but I was a speaker too. So hope, you know, okay. I don't know if you could see everybody, but if you look up in the picture, it says everybody's name in the picture. So yes. Go so connect. go, um, you know, if you, you know, if you heard from some of these um, business owners today and you're interested in their, their services, right. Whether you're looking in the coaching realm, you're looking from a travel perspective, interior design, real estate, You've got the cream of the crop who have earned top voice and the stamp of approval by LinkedIn. Go check them out, right? We've got some of the best clients on the planet. Um, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for showing up today. Thank you for pivoting from the audio, showing up on Zoom. We love you guys so much. Um, and we'll see you inside the Academy. Um, thank you for sharing your time and your expertise with our audience today. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.